got the okay. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Live. Okay. That's okay. We're going to have commercial. I'm just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I would like to call this July 11th Plan Commission meeting to order at 7 o'clock. If you can, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Samantha, can we have the roll call, please? Sure. Ken Carroll? Here. Angelo Desario? Here. John Stanton? Here. Cheryl Slavazeski? Jeff Peterson? Bill Thomas? Here. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the Plan Commission meeting held on June 27th, 2024. So, so moved. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Motion. I'll second it. <laughs> Motion by Commissioner Carroll. Second by Commissioner Desario. Roll call, please. Ken Carroll. Yes. Angelo Desario. Yes. John Stanton. Yes. And Bill Thomas. Yes. Motion carried. Motion approved. Oh. Okay, we have one case on the agenda for tonight. It is case. RZ-24-1-7-1, a request of Marion Pet Petkowski. Petkowski. Pardon? Petkowski. 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 Thank you. Seeking approval of the rezoning of the property located at 1817 North Broadway, Broadway Street, Crest Hill, Illinois from R1 single family residence district to R2 two family residence district. Samantha, is all the paperwork? The in necessary order? paperwork is in order. Okay, with that, I would like to have a motion to open the public hearing for case RZ-24-1-7-1. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Desario, second by Commissioner Carroll. Roll call, please. Angelo Desario? Yes. Ken Carroll? Yes. John Stanton? Yes. And Bill Thomas? Yes. Motion carried. Public hearing is open at 7.02. Uh, the subject of this hearing is to discuss case RZ-24-1-7-1. And I would like to start out by asking our administrative clerk, Zoe Gates, to present the case. Thank you. Um, as you said, this is a rezoning from R1 to R2 request for 1817 North Broadway Street. Uh, currently, there is a mix of zoning surrounding the property, both um, business and residential. As you see in your staff report, um, the excuse me, comprehensive plan, one page of which you do have in your packets for the land use and development suggested for the area does um, indicate that this would, the, the wish of the city would be that this would head towards business zoning exclusively. Um, that's part of what you would need to discuss this evening. Um, also, this property has with a previous owner come before plan commission and city council in 1998 and was denied a request to rezone from R1 to R2. Um, I would accept any questions at this time. I don't know any additional information you may need. Anybody have any questions for Zoe? Is there, Zoe, is there a reason why it was uh, denied? I did not see anything in the minutes from that time. I did go through them in the vault, and it didn't have any discussion at that time. So I don't know an exact reason. The comprehensive plan is from 2014, so that's after that date. Couldn't tell you for sure. I have one question here relative to the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. The plan's been in force now for nine, ten years. Ten years, yes. Nothing's been done over in that area. You know, are we still serious about uh, pursuing the comprehensive plan? Or is there anything in the, in the works right now? 
There's nothing I, you know, at that exact address that's um, proposed, but this current owner doesn't wish to use it for business. It would be the city's choice as to whether they wish to continue to follow that comprehensive plan, but I see no reason why they wouldn't if they haven't changed it. I can speak to the comprehensive plan. So mm. the comprehensive plan it uses a guide um, in terms of development, and even though something may have not happened now, it could just be purely because of the lack of development or so forth in the area, but that doesn't necessarily. So when you look at a rezoning, you um, not only are you tasked with the standards that are in your packet to look at, but you also have to look at it as a consistent with your comprehensive plan. So if it is against the comprehensive plan, that's causing you to pause and then reevaluate the comprehensive plan if you should choose to rezone it to something other than what it should be in the comprehensive plan. Um, they've included the land use and development plan, but also we have this future land use plan, which um, identifies this area as commercial as well. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Okay. Uh, I'd now like to ask uh, Daniel. Daniel. How, let me help, help me with your last, I'm terrible. Oh, the last name's a doozy. Stefanchuk, S-T-E-F-A-N-C-Z-U-K. Okay. If you put an H where the Z is, it makes sense. <laughs> Got to be a hockey <laughs> fan to get that name. Okay, and uh, if there's a, I think there's a paper for you to sign in there. Yes, absolutely, we will do. So. And if, before you start speaking, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it? Yes, sir. Okay. So when my uh, client purchased this, this was in violation as a two unit. Um, essentially, it was already flagged by the city uh, with illegal tenant um, living there. It took you know several months to evict a tenant, et cetera. The house is built in a way where it already kind of conforms to this R2 type of situation, egresses, both floors, et cetera. Um, obviously, with the two tenants in there, the, the, the layout of the single family home currently now, it's already been transformed into a two unit. Now, when we look at the surrounding properties, um, obviously Broadway's a pretty big thorough way there. Um, across the street, I believe there is commercial, it's just vacant land. Mm -hmm. um, now, and then when we look to the south, I believe it's south, um, I think it's a single family home, but it's been rezoned to commercial. I think there's a plumbing business that runs out of it. And then to the north, and this might be vice versa, um, I believe, and I'm going off of you know Google Street View, um, there is a multi-unit, a, a massive multi-unit um, that is essentially right around the ways. Um, I, can, I can clarify that for you. Please, if you like. thank you, sir. The, to the north is, a, is the rem, a remodeling business. That's zoned B2. To the south is zoned uh, R3. It's a four-unit property. Okay. It is empty at this time, and the owner is considering demolition and a rezoning to a business zoning, although they have not taken action on that yet. Okay. So, essentially, my client is trying to get this zoned as a two-unit just because it, it is on a major uh, thorough way. Uh, you know, when I look at this street, I don't see single-family homes lining it. I do see mm -hmm. four units. The single family homes have been kind of converted into storefront type situations or businesses. And, you know, that's why we're, we're kind of here and trying to rezone this to a two unit. Okay, so, so you we are thank you for all your help as well. Oh, with, you're uh, welcome. With that's what we're here for. <clears throat> you are familiar with the comprehensive plan for this, for Broadway? I, I now am, yes. It goes from uh, Caton Farm to Theodore. Okay. And uh, the intention of this comprehensive plan, at some point in the future, whenever, that is all going to be commercially, commercial type uh, buildings and, and not any residences. Okay. So that's in the plan. Okay. You know, as we say, it's moving along pretty slow, but that's still the plan for that area. That's the intention, correct. So, okay. Uh, commissioners, any questions? John, any questions? 
when was this converted to a two-unit nullity violation? I I would suppose we purchased it in 22, the latter portion of 22. We actually were under contract uh, first time in 21. Um, it was in violation when we purchased it. There was uh, violations paid for to the city from closing. Um, when it was converted, I can't tell you exactly, but I can tell you just by looking at Google Street View, there have been two electrical meters because we've actually had to pull permits, and this kind of all started with these electrical meters. Um, the electrical meters go back, I believe, to 2008. Um, on Google Street View, so there have been two meters there, and now with the information that I have of the attempted rezoning in 98, I could go back and see, you know, if that was the same owner that we purchased from, but I would assume that this was converted way before uh, the seller uh, acquired this property. So I would assume anywhere from 98 to, well, 96 to 2000, um, that's probably when it was illegally converted. Yeah, there are no permits on file whatsoever for the conversion. None of the work there has had any permits pulled for it. Um, there is only one water meter. I did check that with our city records. The, the two electric meters, only one of them is active. Is that correct? I, I honestly don't know for a fact. I know. I know. think I think both of them are. Active. Are they okay? Yeah. Well, so I know there's, Comed there's will already... not activate without. Correct. Now I don't know about in the past, but now Comed will not turn on meters without our approval, the city's approval. So I'm like 99% uh, sure that both of them are active and already split with the panels. Um, but yeah, when we were going back and forth and just kind of looking up on the internet, you know, if we could see some evidence, um, Google Street View essentially gives you a year date um, that you can go back in time. And we went back all the way to 2000, I think six or eight, and there was already two meters there. And now with the information on 1998, the attempted rezoning, I would assume this has been converted all the way back from the 90s and illegally rented going forward. I have a question here. The water and sewer lines, will they, are they sized to a point where they can they accommodate a second family? So I, I don't know what international residential code you guys follow. Uh, we're um, on 2015, right? 2015? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it I is. would assume. It's 2015, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would assume... Um, I would assume that without adding another unit on this, it would be perfectly fine because the single family home, the only thing that you're really adding is a secondary kitchen. So that drain from that secondary kitchen that was added because the plumbing was likely there already for the drainage on the bathrooms, even without the conversion, I'm assuming two bathrooms and a single family home. I asked the question because there have been some sizing uh, problems relative to stormwater in this community where it's been too small for the for the service and it was actually so I'm just absolutely I would assume that this is you know your your three quarter inch lead line um, you know the, this property was built uh, when that was the code um, I would assume it's clay pipe and you know the drainage um, I'm sure that my client would be okay with increasing or getting that up to code if the rezoning was granted. Well, Zoe, would, 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 that, would that come under our responsibility or would that be the responsibility of the city, the city, of engineer, the city engineer to make sure that uh, everything is Building the way it's supposed to be? Well, <clears throat> it's not the city engineer. Um, it would not be our responsibility to change the building that of course would be no, the building no. owner um, we can certainly have them provide us with the um, uh, the the flow calculations that's how we calculate a tap on for say a new house so if you wish they could they could provide the city with flow calculations and we could have our public works department determine if based on those flow calculations if it was suitable for a two-family residence. Oh, the responsibility of the owner then. Right. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I may interject that, correct. Oh, absolutely. If you would consider any any change 
that it would have to comply with all building codes and, and everything. So the, anything that would change it from one to two, mm -hmm. anything would have to comply with any building code, any anything such as that. So you'd have to evaluate it. It just couldn't remain remain as is. Okay. And although I don't know that there's That's been any, what I, was looking for. I don't know that there's been any plumbing changes. There has been remodeling done without a permit by this current owner. Mm -hmm. So just from personal knowledge, uh, we, I've gone through a two to a three um, personally, and we had to increase the diameter of not only the service line for the plumbing, but we had to increase the riser pipe for the amperage and add a panel, and brand new gas line, et cetera. But that is a building code type situation. So if rezoning was approved, uh, I would have to go back to my client and say, okay, get the inspector back in there, see what needs to be completed to get this up to par now for a R2, right? So if that drain needed to be increased, it is what it is. Have a nice day. Uh, you got your wish and spend some more money. Uh, has the has development department did an evaluation for uh, life safety? We, we have not been able to do a full inspection of the property in the building department. So I think the building department was out, but it had to do with more of the electrical. And I believe it was just one of those situations where um, I believe they checked plumbing as well. Um, they pulled a, they attempted to pull an electrical permit to basically um, swap out the sockets for the electrical meters because they're so outdated. Um, but again, if we were successful in this, we would have to reevaluate, get an inspector out there. The inspector would probably give us a laundry list of things that need to be completed. We'd have to pull the appropriate permits for that, get the roughs or the finals, et cetera, and then final it out. Yeah, the, the commissioner cannot approve a permit for two meters on a single family home. <laughs> That's why he did not approve that permit. Yeah. That that was kind of the crux. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I wonder how this would work because if we were to, to decide to approve it, well, does it have to be finalized to the building apartment as far as making sure it complies to all building code, including the life safety? issues correct that's that's in general yes. that's re regardless of anything it would absolutely um, I mean if you correct no matter whether it's any building or any resorting it has to that does not preclude them from uh, bringing it up to any code standard to reflect that of the change in use because this would be a change in use to the property I'm sorry it's a change in use, use. Oh. So I think logistically it would be either denial or approval. Denial, obviously, we're already standing, you know, at a single-family home. Approval, we would essentially have to get uh, an inspector out there from the code enforcement department and get a laundry list of things, items that would need to be completed to comply with uh, uh, the building code 2015 IRC. Uh, Angelo, any questions? Are there two families living in that building now? One. Okay. And the purpose for a rezoning on this is? Two. It's for two, but the homeowner or the landowner wants to do this because they're looking for income? Yeah. So this is an investment property. And the thing is, is they're going to keep this property regardless. It's going to be one of those situations where... You know, I've spoken with my client. I spoke with my client on the first offer that fell apart, and I said, you know, you're buying a headache um, and a potential liability. Um, he's been into it for two years now. He's probably spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars between the – just on me a little bit, you know, violations, et cetera, et cetera. But if it doesn't get approved, he will end up renting this. It'll still be an investment property. It's just going to be one large family that takes over the entire house. 
But yes, this is an investment property. Uh, just to clarify, so the new, let's say, new owner purchased this, did you say two years ago? Two years ago. And they were not aware of the violations? Oh, no, I did my job properly, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. No, so, he was aware of the violations. So it was a chance. It was a risk that he was willing to take, correct. But if I, if I read your expression right, were you not aware of the comprehensive plan in existence when they bought this property, knowing they'd never be able to change it, most likely? From I was, and that's why I told them not to purchase this property. <laughs> Twice. Good for you. All right, any more questions? Maura, do you have any more comments before I open it up to the audience? Which there is probably. They seem to be deep in conversation. <laughs> Just want to talk. So, so the current zoning is R1. Um, we do also have to note that we have Section 5.5 that talks about, we were talking about the sale of the property. We were talking about the sale of the property. So I just want to note that the city does have, and we've talked about it other times, that at such time there's a non-conforming use that is non-conforming at such time sale and must be brought into conformancy. So just that's, that's the... Um, the underlying uh, zone or regulation that comes into it. Even though it was R1, if they even had two in there, that's considered non-conforming, so by the sale. That does happen often. Um, we, we do come across it quite mm -hmm. frequently at the, we do. At the, at the, the city. But if the, uh, if the property owner wants to turn it into a rental property, is that still fall under R1? <laughs> Renting it as a single family entity with only one Yes, that still falls under R1. It's okay. when converting it and having two, two or more in there that it would change it from the R1 zoning. Okay. All right, thank you, Daniel. We'll sit back down. Thank you. Let's see, I, just, I have to go through this, but is there anybody in the audience that would like to come to the podium and make a comment uh, on this case? Let the record show that there is no one in the audience that's coming to the podium. Uh, that being the case, I would like to ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Carroll. Second. Second by Commissioner Serio. Roll call, please. Ken Carroll. Yes. Angelo DeSerio. Yes. John Stanton. Yes. And Bill Thomas. Yes. Motion carried. Public hearing closed at 7.23. <clears throat> okay. Decision time. Anybody want to make a further comment before I ask for a motion? So I think that uh, Zoe made the, the appropriate comment that the plan commission is challenged to uh, withhold the zoning ordinances and then review them when someone wants to make a change. They're also charged with uh, uh, backing up or, or staying with the comprehensive plan uh, almost exclusively. So uh, this property certainly is a concern from that standpoint. So. Uh, I guess at this point, I would like to ask for a motion to deny the request from Marion Fetkowski for approval of the rezoning of the property located at 1817 North Broadway Street, Crest Hill, Illinois, from R1 single family to R2 two family, based on the facts and comments that we've just heard. So moved. Motion by Second. Commissioner Carroll. Second by Commissioner Stanton. Roll call, please. Ken Carroll? Yes. John Stanton? Yes. Angelo DeSerio? Yes. Bill Thomas? Yes. So, uh, Daniel, the Plan Commission has denied the request 
from Mary Bukowski for approval of the rezoning of the property located at 1817 North Broadway Street, Crest Hill, Illinois, from R1 single family to R2 two family. And the reason is that I believe the granting of this request to allow this unit to be divided into a multifamily unit would set a precedent for others in the area to request this change. And as previously stated, this type of housing is not in the comprehensive plan as it exists today. And so we will forward our recommendation to the city council for their consideration. Keep in mind the plan commission can only recommend what to do. It is up to the city council to make the final decision do we have any idea when the city council meeting would be? I'm taking a look at the calendar now. It would probably go to the next work session. Um, which is the 22nd. Which is the 22nd would be the earliest. Okay. We'll confirm with the administration if that would be an acceptable okay. time. And we will let the July applicant know? Start. Correct, July 22nd. Perfect. Yes. Okay. I will email Perfect. to document. Okay. Good. Thank you, Daniel. Sorry to drag everybody out. No, no problem. That's why we're here. I told him so. Yeah, it's. it's I get home and change those diapers, huh? Yeah, no, I missed that. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Good thank night. you, sir. Out of curiosity, how long has the comprehensive plan been in place? 2014. 10 2014. years. 2014. 10 years, yeah. 10 years. And since then, um, a lot of progress? Very little progress. A few, I think you heard a few businesses have popped up there, but. Out of single family homes? Mm hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, do you guys think it would be better to change that comprehensive plan to multi units so the vacancies across the street, et cetera, could be held by investors so that property tax could kind of increase? And Produce a little bit for Cresto. I will defer and say that that is a whole other process that <laughs> is done through Understood. the comprehensive yeah. plan. Just throwing it out there. That is also a public process as well. Just yeah. throwing it out there. Well, I appreciate everybody. Thank you. All right. Good night. Okay. Under other business, we have two items for discussion. If you will remember at the June 27 Plan Commission meeting, uh, our attorney Mike Stiff discussed uh, the proposal for updating the Plan Commission bylaws. And uh, again, we're still not sure when they were updated last, but there have been uh, quite a few changes in, uh, in the Plan Commission procedures uh, since then. So in your packet, you should have received both a red line copy and a clean copy uh, of the changes that uh, are being proposed. And let me give you an idea of some of the key changes. The most obvious one is the meeting date has changed from the second Wednesday to the second Thursday of each month. The meeting location has changed from the old city council chambers to the new city council chambers that we are sitting in. The position of commissioner secretary has become more of an overseer position than an actual action position. The executive step secretary position uh, is now a staff member of the city and is responsible for all secretarial duties. We're trying, we're gonna get some more clarification on that before the city council, uh, or before our next meeting, excuse me, uh, just what that means. So if Christine, if that's why you were here, don't get mad at us. Uh, we're gonna make sure that that's ironed up so we know exactly what that statement's made. I'm reading from Mike Stiff's notes. Uh, the order of business has been updated as we see how our agenda looks now. It's not the way they looked in the previous uh, bylaws. The procedure for amending future, future amendments of the bylaws has also been simplified. Uh, as you recall, last meeting we had to have three signatures to even bring it to this meeting. 
And if you read in the minutes of the new bylaws, it's that uh, someone, a commissioner can bring up a proposed change and it can be discussed and voted on at that time by uh, majority. Uh, we've cleaned it up by adding uh, the dates, the date on the document and page numbers. And we've added a requirement for a signature to uh, finally approve the document. Uh, everybody okay, or you have a question about what we're trying to do here? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I know that the city is doing a uh, audio visual uh, um, things for for individuals to do remote meetings through, like. Zoom, et cetera. Is that also applicable for, for the commissioners? Yes, yeah, so about two city council meetings ago, maybe three, two or three, the city council approved the ability for a member of the city council, didn't say it, but it also means a member of the plan commission, I found out, that they can attend meetings by a Zoom but they have to have a quorum of att in attendance before you can say, so like last month when we only had three people in attendance, we couldn't have had a fourth member by Zoom. You have to have four members in attendance and the fifth or sixth could attend if they were sick uh, by Zoom. And uh, so I, I think that was your question, but yes, we can do that. We are covered in that. Uh, I don't know if that was an ordinance change. Whatever it was, they approved it. it. Yes, it was. It was yeah. a specific. So, so the quorum had to be live. They have to be physically present. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so everybody good with it? All right, so in that event, what I would like to take is, uh, is a straw vote. Uh, just so we can proceed, uh, straw vote to, to approve the uh, updated Plan Commission bylaws. Angelo? Yes. Ken? Yes, but Carol? I do have a question here. Okay. Um, under attendance, is it attendance excused with, with due cause? Now, you know, some of us are getting a little bit long in tooth we might be coming up with this, um, an illness or two, which might take us out for more than a month, for two months. Uh, is that part of due cause? That's all. So there, there is a stipulation in there that a commissioner cannot miss more than three uh, meetings in a row of unexcused absences. So if, for instance, you were to ever catch COVID, <laughs> Uh, that's definitely an excuse, and it would not count against uh, count against. But I, I'll make a. I'm going to make a couple comments about that after we get done with this. Yeah, like I, I'm up for probably a possible knee replacement, so I'm going to be missing a month or two. So well, see, you would be a candidate for Zoom in that case, and as long as if, we had a quorum, if there, we had a quorum, could, okay, yeah, all and, right, and hopefully we'll get our sixth member Good. sooner than later. Good. Mr. Sure. Chairman, just to clarify, okay. usually that yeah. entails like if you're continuously on vacation. Um, so, you hey know, now. <laughs> continuously, I use the word continuously it's on vacation. That's usually when it comes vacation. in and it's usually the judgment based on, yeah. based on those yeah. who appoint you. And I, I think where we talk about excuse versus not, the, the, obviously excuse absences take away the concern about nursing. Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Stanton. Yes. The changes. All right. So, with that being the case, at our August meeting, we will officially vote on approving the updated bylaws. And from what I know, Alex, yes. Mike told me that the sit this does not have to go to the city council. So, when I, <clears throat> when I spoke with Mike last week, that was our understanding. Uh, that the bylaws are of this board and that's what governs the board. So I do not mm -hmm. believe that any changes to the bylaws need to be approved by the city council. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've helped and rewrite 
an awful lot of bylaws for the Car Carolina Lakes thing and uh, for, for all of our commissions. And a couple of years ago, we had them all redone, but they all had to go in front of the board to get for the final approval. Right. I was a little surprised, but I mean, that's fine. If, if we don't have to do it, we won't push it. So. Yeah, and, and that's something I can talk about with Mike again when he gets back, but when we talked about it, that was sort of the consensus that we came to. It Not that, well, it, it doesn't have an effect really on the board itself, and mm -hmm. it's, as this is sort of an independent council, not necessarily underneath the city council, it's, right. it's an independent board, okay. uh, so it wouldn't need to go to them for approval. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, since uh, next, next month or the next meeting, assuming we don't have one next month, we will officially approve the bylaws and they will go into the file. So since the straw vote said that we were gonna do that, we are now able to vote to elect uh, new, new chairman, vice chairman, and secretary positions. Uh, let's start with the position of chairman. So we'll need to do a motion, a second, and a roll call vote. Unless somebody else wants to do it, I, uh, with great pleasure and honor, would like to continue. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Carroll. Second by Commissioner Desirio. Uh, do we need you to take the roll call, or we just can I take it? You want to? Why don't you take it? Okay. For consistency, so should, yes. the okay. for consistency, yeah. the executive yeah. secretary yeah. should take that. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So Ken Carroll. Yes. Angelo Desirio. Yes. John Stanton. Yes. And Bill Thomas. Yes. The motion carried, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's my honor to be uh, the chairman of this. Well, we didn't have two minutes. <laughs> Man, so <might> continue. <laughs> All right, so I need a motion for vice chairman. Currently, it is Ken Curl. Does anybody else want to be vice chairman? I then would make a motion to continue with Commissioner Curl as our vice chairman. I second that. Second by Commissioner Stanton. Roll call, please. Bill Thomas. Yes. John Stanton. Yes. <laughs> no, you get the vote. She didn't want to be it. <laughs> Ken. Doesn't matter. We're we'll elected. Ken anyway. Carroll. <laughs> Did he say abstain or Ken Carroll? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's overjoyed to continue and to Angela be vice chairman. Sir. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then finally, the position of secretary. Now we talked about this in some previous discussions about the fact that we have an incredible executive secretary that takes really good care of us, why do we need a plan commission secretary? Well, the reason we need that is lo and behold, the existence of the plan commission is part of the zoning ordinance and the zoning ordinance says you must have a chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. If we were to try and eliminate the position of secretary, we would go, it, it would be a logistic nightmare to change the zoning ordinance. Uh, so that is why uh, it's written in here now that you're just gonna kind of oversee. Uh, in fact, maybe we could think your, our secretary's, no, I'm not gonna no. say that boss. No. <laughs> so, so we still have to keep the position and you're doing a great job of doing nothing. Thanks. <laughs> I, I appreciate the support. Gosh. <laughs> All right, so I make a motion for Commissioner Desario to continue as our secretary. I second. Yes. Bill Thomas. Yes. John Stanton. Yes. yes. Ken Carroll. Yes. And Angelo Desario. Yes. All right, motion carried. Okay, so last month was not the proudest month of the Plan Commission. And it turned out to be a little embarrassing as I attend the city council meetings and it was come up, it came up in city council that they were very disappointed that we had to 
delay the plan commission meeting two different times, which affected the two cases for people who wanted to get them going. So I don't know if they brought that up because somebody, one of the two cases made a comment. I don't know. But we've got to try to figure out not to let that happen again. And, uh, and, and Maura kind of made the joke about extended vacations. I, I have a hard time knowing that we know when every single plan commission is, or every month, that planning a vacation on that day, I mean, I would never say it's not excused, but I would certainly discourage us from avoiding that, if at all possible. I mean, maybe if something that you have to go then because you're having a you know, huge reunion or whatever, but I, I just encourage you, boy, I, I just don't want to ever do that to an applicant again. Keep on uh, two weeks in a row, have to delay the plan commission meeting. Well, it, 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 in not trying to make excuses, but in defense, we're down one person on the plan commission. Which didn't help. Which didn't help us not attain our, our quorum. One person on the plan commission had COVID and to not risk getting anybody else sick, which, thank you, uh, chose not to come. So that put us down two people. Uh, hopefully we can get a seventh person on this commission. Well, I hope so. Well, I'm, I'm not picking on, on you guys for taking vacations on that day. I'm just saying, this is what happened. We have to try everything we can do to show up. I know that's easier said than done, but, uh, I mean, I appreciate each and every one of, of you people. And uh, I mean, it's an honor, honestly, to, uh, to work with you in what I think is one of the key commissions in the city. And, uh, and I'll leave it at that, but I appreciate you all. Uh, anybody in the audience want to make a public comment? Well, we, not only can we not get somebody to apply to be a commission. We can't even get people to come out of the nice weather and watch the plan commission work. I don't know. Uh, okay. Count it your blessings. <laughs> <laughs> I've been since it's a real wonderful meetings. <laughs> All right, so with that, I would like to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Desario, second by Commissioner Carroll. Roll call, please. Angelo Desario? Yes. Ken Carroll? Yes. John Stanton? Yes. And Bill Thomas? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone, for coming. <laughs>